Hello, my name is Joel Spitzer. I've been running smoking prevention and smoking cessation programs for coming on 40 years now. And originally, I mean, for the first three decades that I was doing programs, they were live programs. They were either uh, prevention programs for students on how, why they shouldn't take up smoking. And I did those for about five years as my main focus. Then in uh, 1976, I started running stop smoking clinics. And during that time period from 1976 to 2000 or so, I was doing both prevention programs, not as many, but some, and mostly stop smoking clinics. And then after uh, 2000 until about, uh, until about a couple years ago, actually, I was doing live stop smoking clinics. I stopped doing live clinics primarily because I had started to make videos. Now, when I was first doing the videos, I, I, it wasn't my intent that it was going to put an end to my stop smoking clinics. But it was interesting because in the stop smoking clinics, I would struggle to get, you know, 10 to 20 people to show up to a meeting and then go into these uh, where they had to come every day, Tuesday through Friday, Monday to following Monday. They were sitting through 10 hours of lectures, basically. And it was getting hard over the last few years to get people to really commit to that kind of schedule. It was amazing because for the first, you know, the 30 years that I was doing clinics, that really wasn't that hard to get people to commit and to really show up. But things got more complicated. I, I can't explain exactly why. Uh, I think this is probably in, in lots of areas where people with children, the children had evening activities, they had sports activities. It was just like uh, and, uh, people's work lives. They were starting to work nights where they never had to work nights before. And it was really hard to get people to come to a succession program. I started making the videos for the internet for people just finding us through the whyquit.com site, but I was also trying to send people who were missing sessions to go get the videos. Because what I did with the videos was try to capture what I was covering day by day. I used to feel bad when people would miss sessions because there might have been material that was being covered in that session that wasn't making a difference that day, but it was covering things that was going to help them prevent relapse weeks down the line, years down the line. I mean, just one little thing that if they had heard it, it may have really prevented a problem. And uh, the more people were missing, and sometimes, you know, well over half the group would miss individual sessions. But when I had the videos, I was able to say to people, well, just, just go get that video, you know, that'll cover the material. Well, then I realized, I'll just do the whole thing. I'll put all the stories on, and that way, you know, people who don't have to travel into my clinic, and it's more universal. People can see it and get it anywhere and, and watch it in their own time frame. As I started to have more and more of the videos and then realized I, I had the whole clinic on video, it just wasn't necessary to drag people into a clinic, and I knew that. And it was like the handwriting was on the wall really quick for me that this was just ridiculous to make people come. I'll tell you, people still wanted to come. Uh, I wasn't running out of commitments to do programs, but it just didn't make sense. Again, it wasn't hard. I shouldn't say this. It was hard to get a large group of people to come in, but it wasn't hard to get people saying they wanted to come to a clinic, but it was hard to get those people to come and sit through six days in a row, or again, four days, then a day and then a day. Well, anyway, the videos were made. I first had them posted at whyquit.com. I've moved them all into YouTube now. They're still at Whyquit, but with Whyquit, they're in a format which is only viewable on a PC. With the YouTube videos, they're viewable, I think, on basically any computer format that can do YouTube, and that, I think, is most computer formats. So I'm very happy about that. It, we, it's not a type of thing where people have trouble accessing these things now, and they can watch them at their own pace. What I did in the clinics, and what I do in the videos is I try to get people to understand real, really four core pieces of information about quitting smoking. I want them to understand why they smoke. I spend quite a bit of time on that. I want them to understand why they should stop. I want them to understand how to stop. And I want them to understand how to stay off. The videos capture the material that I did in the clinics to help people who want to quit smoking. You know, we're not here to force people to quit smoking. I'm not trying to scare them into quitting smoking. I'm not there to, you know, force them to do something because the society wants them to quit. My whole premise 
from the time I started doing programs was to help people who wanted to stop smoking. These videos are here for you to use to do that. I just, in the last couple of days, I put them into playlists so you can see videos to watch in a day-by-day -day format. I, I'm sorry because there's quite a bit of length on some of those first few days and I, I, I know a lot of people won't be able to watch them all, but try to watch as many as you can while you're in the quitting process. Don't, uh, I, I, you could do this, but it's not to your best advantage. Don't sit and smoke day by day, watch the video, learn all you can, and then down the line you'll, you'll delve into quitting. You're, you're wasting the time that I think you need the greatest amount of focus. It's when you're quitting smoking. When you're ready to quit, when you throw out your cigarettes, you know, after watching the intro, so you understand what the, this, the videos in the introductory playlist, after you watch those, if you want to smoke and you watch those, fine. But if you're going into the day-by-day -day format and you really want to do this right, Quit smoking that first day and start watching those videos. I think you'll understand why that I'm saying this because those day by day uh, stories are trying to help you understand what's happening at that point in time and giving you the reinforcement that will help you get through what might be a tricky point in time. It might be, it might not be, but it's what those videos are for and I, I hope you utilize them that way. Now, I also want to point out that at whyquit.com, we have something called Joel's Library. Now, in the library, there are the copies of the videos in there, too, but there's also 100 articles. Now, the articles were never really written. This is how people are using them now more so than, than not, but they were never written to help people to quit smoking. The articles were actually always used as a reinforcement tool once people had quit smoking. I'd actually be sending them out a couple of first week, a couple of week after that, and then once a month for years, I was sending out material to try to reinforce people's resolve to stay quit. Well, that's what's at the White Quit articles in the library now. So once you quit smoking, if you do the video format, start looking at the White Quit library, and you don't have to spend tons of time on this. And again, Keep in mind, the way they were originally intend, intended to be used and the way that I think they can still be used is people get one or two a week. It would take them, you know, 10 minutes to read and it would just give them reinforcement to get over, you know, those, those tricky time periods that can happen over, you know, over time without smoking. Anyway, the videos are there and I want you to utilize them. We have an online support site also through Why Quit, but I'm going to point out something. Um, it, it's not that I have anything against the an online support site, but I don't think most people need to do an online support site. Uh, if you go through the videos, what happened in the clinics? I, I had people for 10 hours in the clinic. I almost never saw the majority of those people again. Unless they came in to help as volunteers, and I had a, quite a few people who would do that over the years, I'd run into them in the street. And you know what? For the years that I was doing this, I'd run into people pretty much daily. <laughs> you know, I was working in a pretty small area. It was a, a suburban area of Chicago, but I had, you know, 5,000 people who went through my live stop smoking clinics, and I'd run into people regularly who I had not seen in, you know, months or years and decades and they recognized me or I'd recognize them and they were doing fine. It wasn't like they focused their life, you know, the day after day, month after month, you know, with some sort of interaction with me. It was these chance meetings and I knew they were off smoking and, you know, it was great. I, was, I always loved seeing them that way. But I also know from that experience that people don't have to dedicate their life to not smoking. They can just live their life not smoking. So there, there is an online support site that if you feel like you, you want to have ongoing support that you can go to. Uh, I, I'm not that involved in a way with that anymore. I, I try to go in daily and if I see problems that people are having I'll try to address them but I truly believe if you really want to quit smoking and you know put in some time and effort up front. It's going through these you know videos as you're not smoking. I believe if you go through them though you're gonna have the experience that I see from emails every day that I get from people who are off years now by having gone through the videos, learned all they could to get their quit started, to reinforce their resolve through the remaining videos, by going through the articles, to firm up a strong commitment 
to never take another puff.